the year. At the point, Claire Overdorf starting her eighth game of the season tonight. Overdorf is a 5'6 freshman from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Three points and two rebounds. Her averages on the season. Allie Clements, the other guard, a 5'8 sophomore from Falmouth, Maine. Clement was on the back all rookie team a season ago. She averages nine points per game this year and leads Marist with a 39% mark from beyond the arc. On the wing, Foxes have first team all back pick this preseason in Sydney Coffee making the start. Coffee, a six foot senior from Hopkins, Minnesota. 13 points, four boards, and four dimes a game for her. She's got over 1,200 points in her career. That's ninth all time as she rockets her way up that list. At the four, Marist is starting Laura Fitzpatrick, 5'11 freshman from Cheshire, Connecticut, six and four. Her averages this year, she is coming off a career high 15 points, seven rebounds, and three threes against Monmouth last Sunday. And finally, in the middle, Marist has 6'3", six 6th six year senior Tori Jarose at center. The Cortlands Manor, New York native, is averaging 17 points and 11 rebounds a game to go along with three blocks a night. She's 38 points from 1,000 in her career. One more time, your Associates Golf Car starting lineups for Niagara, Corselli, Bryant, Grandruth, Strumpel, and Lipzinski. For Marist, it's Oberdorf, Clement, Coffey, Fitzpatrick, and Jarose. The referee tonight is Keith Miller, the umpires Joe Barisi and Scott Birkins. Marist Red Foxes are in their home whites with gray and red trim. The Niagara Purple Eagles are in their road purple with white trimmings. Steve, no snow to speak of in the Hudson Valley. It's just cold and windy outside, and as such, not a bad crowd on hand tonight. Hey, they they really travel. They, the, the Foxes have had this kind of uh, fan support really for the last decade or more, Jeff. And, uh, hey, it's a credit to them. It's cold outside, about 20 degrees, but... Uh, Really a pretty good crowd on hand. Jaros to tap it up with Lipzinski. The ball's in the air, and Niagara's got it first as Lipzinski finds Grand Roof to her right. She hands to Corsella, who curls to the top of the key, and the Purple Eagles are in business, shooting at the hoop to the right. Post entry for Lipzinski. She's doubled on the left block and lost the basketball. Ali Clement comes away with the steal after it was tipped away by Tori Jaros. Foxes right to left. On the left baseline, it's Fitzpatrick to Jerome's underneath. She scores with a reverse layup, and Marist has first blood. They lead 2-0 after 30 seconds of play. Really a nice entry pass there by Fitzpatrick. Jerome's made that look easy on the baseline. Corselli, right arc for Niagara. They're just 25% beyond the arc as a team, so Marist will likely let them fire at will from bonus distance. Lipzinski inside, doubled again, lost the ball again, picks it up on the floor, and turns it over again as Claire Oberdorf collects the loose ball. Ahead to Coffee near sideline, cuts right top of the key, finds Clement long range right. Up fake a three, skips it left side for Oberdorf, who dribbles right to the head of the arc. Long range, far side, Coffee hands to Clement. Now in the corner, it's Jarose. Thought about the 18 footer, but the zone swings over, so it's Clement on the far wing with 10 to shoot. Now Coffee up top, around a Fitzpatrick screen to the right elbow. Pull up jumper from there is good, and Maris Steve has cashed in on their first two possessions. Uh, good, another good piece of offense there. Just Coffee stopping on a dime from about 15 feet. Really good so far against this 2 3 zone. 4 0 Foxes, 8 35 remaining in the opening quarter. It's Corselli right arc, zipping it left to Ryan. Now inside. Strumpel, she gets some space against Jarose and is able to score. Yeah, that was a good high-low entry there. Strumpel's big inside, really a tough move going to the goal. She didn't score against Iona on Thursday. First time this year she was held scoreless. I'm sure it's good for her to get off the schneid. 4-2 Maris. The Foxes have the basketball, but not anymore. Oberdorf just threw it away, trying to find Coffee on the left sideline. Yeah, just an unforced turnover there. Uh, Oberdorf been doing very well distributing the basketball. It's an unforced turnover there by her. We played two minutes. Marist leads four to two. It's Niagara basketball. Bryant right arc finds the cutting Grand Ruth in the center of the lane, but she can't hold on to the ball. It's stolen by Marist. Already three turnovers for Niagara. Oberdorf runs right side and gets knocked to the floor as she enters the paint. Whistle blows. Now the ball found its way out of bounds. They're not going to say that Oberdorf was fouled to the floor. She just lost it. Second straight turnover for the freshman point guard, and Niagara's got the rock. Boy, that one, there was a lot of contact yeah. there. I thought uh, they were going to blow the blow the foul, but uh, play on. Grand Root, left side for Niagara. Moves it right to Lipzinski straight on. Here's Bryant near arc. Now top of the key, Strumpel. Back to Bryant, post lob for Lipzinski. Doubled underneath. She's had trouble with the double teams. You're able to pass out to Bryant, but before she got rid of the ball, she's called for traveling. Yeah, good call there, uh, Jeff. Really a good double there 
uh, after the post entry went in. Coffee doubled, really forced that turnover. 7.34 remaining in the first quarter. 4-2 to two Marist. Boy, this game's featured six turnovers already. Four for Niagara, two for the Foxes. Fitzpatrick, left arc for Maris. Here's Jarose, center of the lane, operating against Lipsitsky. She goes to the basket, misses the layup, and the rebound comes to Strumpel and the Purple Eagles. Yeah, it's tough to shoot over Lipsitsky there. Arm straight up at 6'3". She did a good job on Jarose. She may be the only player in the back that has the size to hang with Jarose. Bryant, top of the key, steps to the foul line, takes a 15-foot jumper. It's no good. Rebound out of bounds off of Tori Jarose, so it stays with Niagara. They're really looking to go inside the left. Sinski, uh, Maris doing a good job, though, to start this game doubling her. Well, Niagara knows what kind of team they are. They are not a long-range shooting team. So, yeah, they got to try and figure out how to score in the paint. Maris did a good job taking that away. Under seven minutes to go in the first quarter as Maris doubles the post. Lipsinski struggling with the basketball, turns it over again. Nope, almost did, but it stays with Niagara. Picked up by Corselli, who airballs a shot from eight feet. And Coffee grabs it on the weak side, pushing in transition. Leaves it right for Clement. Three ball. No, it rims out right. And Corselli grabs the carry. Oh, that was halfway down. Really a good drop-off pass there by Coffee. Just a round and out there by Clement. Still 4-2. Haven't had a basket here in about two and a half minutes. Grand Ruth at the head of the key for Niagara. To Corselli. Now Lipsinski down low. Gets a left-hand hook away. It's too strong. And the rebound to Tori Jarose. Good box out on the shooter. Coffee over midcourt for the Foxes, who look to play fast against the 2-3. Jarose, center of the lane. Pass out of it right to Oberdorf. Bounce pass to Jarose, right post. She goes to the 10 and finishes. Uh, just a great jump hook with her left hand in traffic. Really superb there by Jarose inside. 6-2 Marist, 5.56 to go in the first quarter. Niagara basketball, they're 1-4 of four from the floor in the early going. Corselli. Passes left to Bryant at 18 feet. Now Strumpel underneath goes left on Fitzpatrick. Shot short, and the rebound to Ali Clement. She pushes in traffic. I like the pace for the Foxes, not letting the zone set up as Clement finds Jarose, but she leaves the layup short. A good look that Tory should have finished as Niagara gets the rebound. Yeah, she usually always puts those away. Received a great pass there by Clement. Just put it up there short. Purple Eagles haven't scored in over three minutes. Long range left, Corselli finds Grand Ruth at the head of the key, who keeps the ball moving right to Bryant. 18 foot jumper is a swish, and that ends the Niagara drought. Yeah, nice mid range jumper there by Bryant. Good closeout by Coffee. You have to tip your hat. That was a great mid range jumper. 6 4 Maris. They lead by two with 5.05 remaining in the first period. Coffee long left against the Niagara zone. She dribbles toward the top of the key, hands to Clement, curling from the far wing. Now at the left angle, Alley to Fitzpatrick, inside Juros, one dribble against Lipsinski, up to the basket, the layup doesn't go, but Fitzpatrick the offensive rebound, and she's hacked, heading back up. That's a nice job there by Fitzpatrick, not giving up on the play, they're really anticipating Juros miss, she got hammered, she's going to line shoot two. The Niagara foul is on Sam Lipsinski. Her first and Niagara's first, the Fitzpatrick free throws coming up on the other side of this timeout. 4.49 to go in the first quarter. Maris leads Niagara 6-4. to four. You're hearing it live on the Red Fox Network. Back inside McCann Arena, 4.49 to go in the first quarter. Marist leads Niagara 6-4. Alongside Steve Eggie, I'm Jeff Brawls. Marist and Niagara are meeting for the 41st time with the Red Foxes holding an edge in the all-time series, 26-14. However, Niagara did get the better of the Red Foxes in these 
two teams last meeting. That occurred on February 15th, 2015. Niagara in this building walked away with a 70-65 victory. It is so rare for a MAC team to beat a Brian Georges-led Red Fox squad in back-to-back -back meetings. How rare? Well, in the last decade, it's only ever happened twice. Last year, Maris lost all three times to Quinnipiac. Prior to that, they dropped two in a row to Fairfield back at the end of the 2013-2014 season and the beginning of the 2015-2016 season. But outside of those two times in the last decade, Steve, no team has won back-to-back -back MAC meetings against the Brian Georges team. Hey, it's just the level of dominance that uh, Poughkeepsie and Marist College women's fans have come to realize. It's amazing when you think about it. Over a decade, uh, they have dominated the MAC, and it's big news when the Foxes get beat here at McCann Arena. Marist has opened three of seven from the field, 43%. Niagara, two of six, 33%. Laura Fitzpatrick at the line coming out of the timeout. She will shoot two. Made 11 of 15 free throws in her freshman season. Laura's first here. There's plenty of spin on it. It drops through. Yeah, she's really started to come on. We've talked a lot about her, Jeff, throughout this season. She's a tremendous athlete with a lot of ability on the offensive end. Second free throw is also in. Fitzpatrick swishes both. Steve, for the first time this season, uh, in the game at Mon against Monmouth on Sunday, you know, Fitzpatrick started to look comfortable and confident. And if she keeps that up, it could be tough times for Mac opponents. Absolutely. She's a big, big weapon on the offensive end. The Maris lead is four. Niagara basketball. Corselli attacks left baseline. It's a reverse layup out of the drive, but she left it short. Sydney Coffey has the rebound for Maris. Oberdorf, Jerose, and Clement. The rest of the starters are on the floor for the Foxes, who go right to left here in the first half. Fitzpatrick, right angle into the high post, kicks it out to Sydney Coffey. Now Jerose at the free throw line zone, collapses, so it's out to Clement. Three ball, got it. Uh, she called for it. Really a great pass there by Jerose. She set her feet, buried it. Allie narrowly missed her first. It was halfway down. She buries the second to put Maris up by seven. 11 for Foxes with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Charisma Bryant at the left elbow for Niagara. She shuffles her feet and travels. Yeah, that's Sydney Coffey. She's very hard to take Coffey off the bounce and uh, really force that turnover. Sid's one of the best defenders in the, in the league. Already Niagara's fifth giveaway. They turn it over 16 times a night on average this season. Allie Clement, long range right, finds Tori Jarose in the left short corner, attacks the baseline into a double, jump pass out of it is airmailed to the media table. Red Fox's third turnover. His first quarter, Steve's been sloppy on both Yeah, it really has. Uh, really, un another turnover there. Tori, you, know, you jump in the air to pass. You know, you learn that at a very young age. She'd like to have that one back. Steve, I will say, our first look at this Niagara 2-3 zone this year, they play it aggressively. They extend it to about 30 feet. It's difficult they, to do, especially with only 7-8 healthy bodies. They do. You know, they really have to play zone with this uh, only 7 people, but they play it very aggressively. Strumpel catches Fitzpatrick full behind and is able to score easily for Niagara. That's just her using her quickness advantage in the floor spot. Yeah, absolutely, and that's their game. Strumpel and Lapsinski, they can get it done on the low block. 11-6, Maris. 3.15 remaining in the first quarter. Foxes with the basketball. Sydney Coffey right angle. Dribbles with a high post out to Oberdorf. Dials long distance but leaves the shot short. Rebound is loose underneath and we've got a whistle. Coffey tapped the ball. She hit the floor along with Corselli. And it's going to be Niagara's point guard Corselli who has whistled for the personal. Her first and the team's second. Yeah, good hustle play there by Sydney Coffey. Keeping that play alive is the reason why Maris retained possession. Ryan Georges will make the game's first substitution. Claire Oberdorf is out. Rebecca Gardrid is in. 5 a freshman from Stockholm, Sweden. Jada Pierce will match up. Game uh, as a Red Fox has missed a shot off the inbounds. But Tori follows her own miss and scores second chance points. Niagara's matchup. Brings on Jayla Nichols, 5'7", freshman from Detroit, Michigan. She's on a place of Charisma Bryant. Purple Eagle basketball. They trail 13-6 to six and are now called for an off-ball offensive foul, giving it away for the sixth time. 2.46 remaining in the first quarter. It's been it, a difficult one for Niagara. It has. That's Garcelli again. You know, those screens are so easy to call. you got to be set. Uh, a lot of moving screens are easy to call. So two on Corselli, but she's got to stay in the game because Niagara is so shorthanded. 
That zone extending almost half court. Here's Fitzpatrick left elbow. Bounce pass Coffee in the near corner to Allie Clement on the wing. At about 25 feet, she'll shoot it from there and knock it down. Wow, that was a deep three by Clement. She set her feet. That was good right when it left her hands. That was an impressive three ball. Sometimes shooters start to feel it, and the basket looks like it's about four feet wide. Maris by 10 with 2.15 remaining in the first. Purple Eagle basketball, Corselli far wing against Gardrid in the Maris man. Bad pass, intercepted by Clement. On a run out to the left, she goes to the goal but misses the finish, and Corselli has the rebound off the trail. Ah, she did everything well but finished. Just a great steal, but... Uh, couldn't get it to go down uh, in the open court there. Far wing Nichols, the freshman, holding it above her head, moves it right to Lipsinski, who keeps it going that direction. Grand Ruth near arc. Back left to Strumpel. Here's Lipsinski, doubled underneath. Hook shot over it, no. And Jarrows with another rebound. Steve Maris done a wonderful job on Niagara's leading scorer, Sam Lipsinski. Oh, they really have. Jarrows going straight up, doubling her, really forcing her into very difficult, difficult attempts. Here's Fitzpatrick in the teeth of the zone. Kicks out right side. Coffey, who puts it on the deck against Porcelli. Back to Fitzpatrick for a three. It's short. Offensive rebound, Gardner. She dribbles out of traffic, finds Coffey. Right wing triple, rims away. And the Caroms controlled by Niagara. It's pulled out of the air by Emily Granruth. Maris doing a good job with offensive rebounds. Hey, when you play zone, they don't have man-to-man -man principles. You can get some offensive boards. 70 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Strumpel out to Corselli. Niagara three, too strong. Laura Fitzpatrick's got the rebound her second. 16-6 Marist in transition. Clement to Jarrows hit hard, and the whistle comes late. And he got the call right eventually as Tori Jarrows was hit up around the head. And she popped right back up. Whenever she takes some hard calls, but she's in such great condition, Jeff. She popped right back up. You always cringe when you know one of your best players takes those hard tumbles. That was Strumpel on the foul, her first, team's four. Kendall Bob enters for Maris, 6'2 sophomore from Shaska, Minnesota. She replaces Maura Fitzpatrick. Here's Gardrin to Jarose. Now Bob underneath can't hold on to a pass from Tori. Has to pick it up, but by that time, it's stolen away by Jayla Nichols. Niagara has made a change. They take Emily Granruth out. She is replaced by Charisma Bryant. Checking back in on the far wing, Tiffany Corselli. Niagara trails by 10 with 33 seconds remaining in the first. Near arc, it's Strumpel working on Kendall Bob. She dribbles to the right block. Shot from there is blocked from behind by Tori Jarose. Out of bounds, still with Niagara. Seven to shoot. Well, Maris has really done a good job, Jeff, in this first quarter. Help defense, doubling the post. They've been very active on the defensive end. Niagara hasn't scored in over three minutes. Got to get the basketball inbounds here. They do to Lipsinski on the right block. Shot's no good, but she was fouled. Bob and Gardrid were in the area. They're going to get Kendall Bob for the personal that puts Lipsinski on the line. Yeah, she just slapped down. She didn't go straight up there. That was a good call. Lipsinski's going to line shoot two. Kendall's first and Maris first. Lipsinski 70% at the stripe. Free throw number one is good. Cuts the deficit to nine. Another free throw from the senior from Jefferson, New Jersey. You got it both. 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Red Foxes have the last shot if they want it. And Niagara's going to press. They go 2-2-1. Gardrid and Clement in the backcourt. Allie Clement passes to Kendall Bob in New York. Now Sydney Coffey across the way. Rebecca Gardrid, 13 seconds to go in the quarter. Gardrid to Clement, long range right. Bob, high post. Out to Coffey in the left corner. Seven to shoot. It's Jarrows on the block. To the basket. Shot, no good. Offensive rebound, Bob. Out to Clement. Three ball is no good at the first quarter. Horn. Fox has got a couple of looks, but can't convert in their last possession. They have to settle for an eight-point lead after 10 minutes of basketball. Maris 16, Niagara 8. Pretty good opening period for the Red Foxes. We'll see if they can keep it up in the second stance the next here on the Red Fox Network.
of the second quarter with the Maris Dread Foxes leading the Niagara Purple Eagles 16 to 8. My name's Jeff Waltz alongside Steve Engel. We're glad to have you along on the Red Fox Network this Saturday night. Allie Clement, Steve, has gotten the Red Foxes off to a good start, knocking down two first quarter threes. Yeah, she called for this one here. Those of you watching on the Red Fox Network, that second one, that was a deep three ball. And uh, she's got that kind of ability to stretch this to three zone defense. Tori Jerome's has equaled Allie Clement with six first quarter points. But Steve, she took eight shots to get those six points. I think Sam Lipsinski's done a pretty good job on Tori. Absolutely. She's you know, 6'3". Lipsinski's a big body in there. She goes straight up and uh, she's made it difficult for Jerome's. But I think as the game wears on, Tori's uh, quickness will bode well for her and she'll start to get more to go down. Mara shooting 35%, 6 of 17. Niagara 27%, 3 of 11. Steve, first halves have been a problem for the shorthanded Purple Eagles recently. They had just 11 in the opening 20 minutes on Thursday at Iona. Just 8 through the first quarter here tonight. Yeah, they just don't have a lot of weapons from even the mid-range. Uh, with their mid-range game, they're very poor. A ninth in the back uh, from beyond the arc. So if Lepsinski and Trouble don't get it done, they're limited on the offensive end. It's Maris basketball first in the second quarter. Gardred, Clement, Fitzpatrick, Bob, and Jarose on the court. So Sydney Coffey is getting a rest, as is Claire Oberdorf. Maris attacking the goal to the left. Niagara's in the zone. They're doing a good job swarming in that 2 3. Free throw line, Jarose out right to Gardrid, finds Bob on the right baseline, dribbles toward the short corner, finds Gardrid outside the arc. Now Clement to Jarose at the top of the key. One dribble to the free throw line, lost the ball, picks it up, snakes her way to the basket, and lays it in. Nice play there by Jarose. It really stuck with that play, almost turned it over, gathered the basketball, took it hard to the goal for the two. 18-8, Maris back up by 10. That's equal to their largest lead of the game thus far. 9.23 to go in the second quarter. Niagara from left to right, Porcelli, Bryant, Nichols, Lipsinski, and Strumpel. It's Nichol, Nich Nichols, right arc against Clement. Top of the key, Bryant. Now Porcelli, far wing back to Bryant. Pitch and catch with Porcelli, who attacks left baseline. Six foot pull up rims off, and Allie Clement for the backside rebound. Clement in a two on two with Fitzpatrick, pulls up on a 16 footer and hits it. That's impressive. Off the bounce, really taking it coast to coast there. Talking about Clement, that was a really an athletic looking play from about 17 feet. She is a streaky shooter, Steve. When her shot is on, it is usually on all night long. Yeah, it, we've seen that all year long. She's got range, but her mid-range game continues to develop. The Maris lead is 12. Niagara basketball, Bryant mid-post right. Jumper from seven, no. Offensive rebound, Strumpel. She puts it back up and in. Yeah, the Eagles needed that. They've really been struggling on the offensive end. Just 10 points here with 8.20 to go in the second quarter. And no question, Strumpel has been the hardest purple Eagle for Maris to defend. She's got six of their ten. Here's Fitzpatrick. Left arc two is good. She hits the ball. Uh, really a nice look at mid-range by Fitzpatrick there. If she can develop that shot with her athleticism, she's going to be very difficult to guard. Mora now has four points. One of two shootings. She made a couple of free throws. Change for Niagara. Jalen Nichols is out. Nichols is replaced by Emily Grandruth. So now Niagara has their starting five on the court. 8.06 to go in the second quarter. 22-10 Maris. Grandruth left arc guarded by Clement the Maris man to Bryant at 18 feet. Back to Grandruth far wing. Post entry for Lipsinski. She's triple team. Dribbles toward the short corner. Jump pass to Porcelli right wing. And now Bryant straight on. Long to short. Rebound out of bounds off of Strumpel. It's the Red Foxes who will take over the basketball. Just another great defensive sequence there by the Foxes. Closing out shooters, doubling the post. They've been terrific defensively. And Red Fox is doing a wonderful job making life difficult on Niagara in the paint because they're just not a particularly strong jump shooting team. Allie Clement, near arc, gets to 16 feet and scores on a jumper once more. She's feeling it tonight. That was a really good up fake there. Stopped on a dime from about 17. We got a timeout on the floor. Ten points for Allie and Jada Pierce needs a timeout. We'll take one as well. Maris leads Niagara 24 to 10. 7.34 remaining in the second quarter. Back after this on the Red Fox Network.
Allie Clements in double figures for the ninth time this season. There's still 7.34 remaining in the second quarter. Barris leading Niagara 24 to 10. One side, Steve Egging. I'm Jeff Rolt and Steve. Allie has her shot dialed in tonight. Ten points on four of seven shooting, including a couple of threes. She looks just terrific tonight. You know, she's always been great from beyond the arc, but she continues to develop her game off the dribble, that mid-range game, and that's what she has to do because as defenses crowd her, they know she's very effective from beyond the arc. She's going to have to be able to create her shot go off the dribble and make that mid-range jumper, and she's done that tonight. Yeah, coming out of high school, Macaulay High School in Maine, Allie's sort of go-to shot was the one dribble pull-up. She couldn't quite get away with it as much in her freshman year last season, so she's gone away from it, but it's been there today. It really has, you know, and she's going to have to do more of that, especially against better teams, because when she catches the ball, they're going to crowd her, especially when she's beyond, from beyond the arc, being able to put it on the dribble, uh, go off the dribble and pull up and shoot those 50 to 17 footers it's going to be a big weapon for her by the way that macaulay high school team that, that ali clement played on uh, their record in her four years 85 and three yeah unbelievable they were just dominant uh, in the state of maine absolutely ali's sophomore junior and senior years in high school she lost one time yeah that's unreal Niagara basketball coming out of Coach Pierce time out. They go from left to right. Here's Bryant on a drive into the center lane. And a nice finish, a little spinning layup with the right hand. Yeah, really an athletic play there by Bryant in traffic, getting that to go down. Cuts the Maris lead down to 12, 24-12 Foxes with 7.13 to go in the first half. Oberdorf back in for Maris, along with Coffee. So the starters, excuse me, four of the starters on the court. Tori Jarose is resting as Lavisa Henning's daughter has entered for the first time. The freshman from Iceland, she's got it on the right post, tries a quick shot, but it's short against contact from Lipsitsky. No whistle as Niagara rebounds. Yeah, I thought that was a good no call. Uh, Henning's daughter just a little off balance there in the paint. Brand Ruth, left arc for Niagara, finds Bryant at the top of the key. Post entry for Lipsitsky. Good job by Henning's daughter to tip the ball away, and it ping pongs out of bounds off Niagara. Nice active hands. Yeah, absolutely. Really a good play there by Henning's daughter inside, really forced that turnover. 642 remaining in the second. 24 12 Maris. They've got the rock from right to left. Mentioned Lavisa, a native of Iceland. Her parents have made the long flight here to Poughkeepsie to watch her play. First time they have seen their daughter live in Division One action. Oh, that's great. I know they're enjoying it. Uh, that's a long way to go, and I'm sure uh, LaVisa really appreciates your parents being here. Coffee near arc for the Foxes. Finds Henning's daughter. Now Clement, three ball is short. Rebound is loose. It is long, and it's back to Niagara. Yeah, just didn't have her legs under there. Another deep three there by Clement. Uh, attempt there right on line, just a little short. Hey, when you're hitting, the shooter's got to shoot. Yeah, absolutely. She was open, set her feet, just a little short off the front iron. Jayla Nichols in the game for Niagara, along with Grant Ruth, Brian Strumpel, and Lipsinski. Strumpel top of the key to Nichols, right angle, and an off-ball offensive foul on the Purple Eagles. Yeah, great job in there by Henning's daughter. Really aggressive defense. Lipsinski didn't like it, elbowed her. Good call. Really nice play inside by Henning's daughter. It's on Sam Lipsinski, her second, joining Tiffany Corselli at that number. First on Niagara with 5.56 remaining in the second quarter. It's 24-12 Maris. The Foxes have the basketball. Coffee right to Fitzpatrick in the high post. She dribbles to the right side of the lane and is called for traveling. Yeah, she just didn't establish that pivot foot. Drug it from about eight feet. Easy call to make. Kayla Nichols, the lead guard, yet to score an NCAA point. Talking about the freshman from Detroit, Michigan, is we've got another offensive foul coming on Niagara. Yeah, it was a great play. They got Bryant there. Great play by Oberdorf coming over from the weak side. Excellent team defense there by the Foxes. Yeah, Oberdorf, who, remember, is a walk-on, came to Maris to play softball with her sister as a middle infielder. Really brought a lot of defensive toughness to this team. She has, and she's done a great job. She's got great vision at the point guard position. Here's Henning's daughter down the right post for the Foxes, and LaVisa scores. Nice yeah. one dribble it up. Absolutely. Really a quick dribble there by Henning's daughter. High off the window. Excellent piece of offense. The Maris lead is 14, their largest of the game. 5-10 to go in the first half. Lipsinski near side for Niagara to Nichols, who slips right by Henning's daughter to the basket, but is unable to finish the open look. Rebound to Sidney Coffey. Good move, but just couldn't get it to go down. Here's Allie Clement, long range right to Oberdorf, top of the key. Nice up fake to get to 16. Floater from that spot's no good. 
And it's pulled out of the air by Charisma Bryant. Bryant back to Jayla Nichols. Takes it over the timeline with three seconds to spare. 4.44 remaining in the second period. 26-12 Marist. Oberdorf pressuring Nichols, who gives up Struffle. Now Lipsitsky underneath, turns right on Henningsdonner, scores, and one. Yeah, really a great play there by Lepsinski. When she gets it that low, you know she's got great hands. One of the first things you look at with a post player, she catches the ball in traffic. She took the contact. She's going to the line for a possible conventional three-point play. Yeah, you see the foul on Henningsdonner on the Red Fox Network replay. Her first and the team's first. Lipsinski, a 70% foul shooter, has made two already. Free throw away, and good. Three the traditional way for Lipsitsky. Brings Niagara within 11. 26-15 Marist, 4.35 to go here in the first half. Oberdorf between the rings. Hence this zone. Jarose out to coffee. Left wing three, got it. Uh, that's a great pass. Jarose looking opposite at the high post. Hit a wide open coffee for the three ball. 29-15 Foxes, 4-13 remaining in the second period. Niagara basketball left to right. Lipsinski with a catch-and-shoot jumper at 14 feet. She banks it in. A nice play there by Lepsinski. She was, that's a great closeout by Jarose. Really nice mid-range jumper there. Overdorf, over mid-court with pressure from Tiffany Corselli just back in for Niagara. Starts the offense to Sydney Coffey left arc. Jarose at the elbow, finds Henning's daughter in the right block, double collapses, and that forces the travel. Yeah, she drug her pivot foot there. Uh, a decent up fake, but you got to establish your pivot foot. Credit Brian Georges, you know, Lavisa traveling there. A lot of three-point play on the other end, but Brian Georges let his freshman play, try to work some kinks out, something you have to do, Steve, to develop a roster. Yes, absolutely. You know, you don't want to look over your shoulder when you make a mistake. I think this is really good to keep her in, give her some extra run here. Maris gets a steal. Three ball, four fits Patrick in the right corner. It's no good. Rebounded by Corselli and Niagara. 324 to go in the second. 29-17. Maris. Strumpel, right block. Pass to the left baseline, and Bryant for a jumper at 10 feet. It's no good. And Oberdorf secures the rebound in traffic. For the Red Foxes. Head to Sydney Coffey, who runs the left sideline. Working on Grand Route, she takes her to the baseline, stops there, and passes to Henning's daughter at the top of the key. Now Jarose in the center of the paint, pivots left on Lipsinski. The shot, no good, and it's out of bounds off the shooter. Back to Niagara. Jarose, you can see the frustration, Steve. Now four of ten on the day. Felt she was fouled. Yeah, there was a little contact there, but Lapsinski, to her credit, she is playing her tough. Lapsinski's not real quick inside, but she has good defensive. Uh, position and she's long. She's 6'3. Jarose having a hard time shooting over the top of her. Henning's daughter's out, replaced by Fitzpatrick. So Brian Georges has his starters on the court right now. Oberdorf, Coffey, and Clement. Jarose and Fitzpatrick, the other two. Right elbow, Strumple. Step back on Fitzpatrick. The shot from 15 feet is no good. Niagara gets the rebound. It goes into the backcourt. Touch last by Marist. So Grand Ruth picks it up and the possession continues for the Purple Eagles. They trail 29-17. 2.30 to go here in the second quarter. Underneath Lipsinski, double team, she coughs it up again. Or Fitzpatrick comes away with the loose ball. And here's Sydney Coffey left arc, dials long distance, but cannot connect. The ball rims away. Rebound to Corselli at Niagara. Another good look there by Coffey. She made her last three ball just around and out. Corselli passes right to Bryant near arc. Coffey's got the assignment for Harris Mann. Bryant left to Corselli, up fake on Overdorf. Here's Grand Root. Far corner three, well short. Rebound long to Jarose. And the Foxes get out in transition. Coffee doesn't want the zone set up. In a one on two, Sid goes to the goal but left the layup short. Jarose an offensive rebound. The putback falls. Uh, just a great play there by Jarose. She didn't give up on it. She ran the floor, really anticipated the miss, got the tip in to go down. Now 10 points for Tory, the second Red Fox in double figures, joining Clement at that number. 31 17, Maris, 93 seconds remaining in the first half. Lipsinski double teamed, able to pass out to Corselli. Now Grand Ruth, right arc three is no good. Rebound to Coffee. Steve Niagara just struggling shooting the basketball. Oh, they just don't, cannot get anything going from the perimeters. Maris turns the basketball over. Bad post entry by Oberdorf, intended for Jaros, is tipped away by Lipsinski. So the Purple Eagles have it, looking for their first points in three minutes. Corselli on the far wing. Here's Bryant left elbow, drives against Coffey, nothing there. Kicks it out to Corselli, inside Lipsitsky, one on one against Jarose. The turnaround, Jay, is good. Really? She's been impressive, really, on both ends of the floor. She's, uh, 
You know, not, not a lot of quickness, but very good footwork, very good hands inside. Nine points for Lipzinski, six for Strumpel, 15 of Niagara's 19 have come from their forwards. 43 seconds remaining in the second quarter, 31-19 Maris. The Foxes have the basketball. It's Fitzpatrick at the foul line to a wide open Oberdorf. The right corner three is good, but before the basket, Maris called for an offensive foul. Fitzpatrick called for charging on the drive. Yeah, I think it was the right call. You know, if the play's right in front of her there, she should have pulled up. You know, she had about an eight-footer she could have attempted, but uh, that was the proper call, calling the charge. First on Mora and the second on Maris. Kaylee Strumpel is getting a rest for Niagara. Morselli Nichols, who's the player back in. Lipsinski, Grand Roof, and Bryant for purple and white. 23 seconds remaining in the first half. There's about a four second differential. Lipsinski top of the key, right arm Bryant, 10 to shoot for Niagara in the corner. It's Nichols. She moves left to the wing. Three ball is no good. And the rebound loose. It's picked up by Jerodes with eight seconds remaining. Brian Georges takes time out. So the Red Foxes will have 7.2 seconds with which to work. They'll have to go about 90 feet to get a shot. That was a good timeout by Georges. I'm sure they'll draw, draw something up. Plenty of time, you know, to get something uh, going to the goal. But I, you can't say enough, uh, Jeff, about Maris' defense. You know, I'm very impressed. They're, such, they're always well scouted. Brian George, great staff. He has a great staff, great coach. But, you know, they, they, they're closing out shooters, but they're concentrating on their low post players. Now, uh, Lapsinski has done some good things. Trumpel has, too, scoring most of their points. But, uh, you know, they're making it very, very difficult for them inside. And, hey, you see where Niagara is losing their point guard. They just have nothing from the perimeter. I mean, they are just devoid of talent shooting the basketball. Yeah, Jamie Sherburn is not just Niagara's floor general, averaging four assists a game. She is also their best three-point shooter at 34%. Without her, the Purple Eagles very one-dimensional. Here come the Red Foxes. Three seconds to go in the first half, and Sydney Coffey is called for traveling on the right sideline. So Niagara will inbound with 3.1 seconds remaining, and we'll see if Jada Pierce can get her squad a shot. Niagara 32% in the first half. Tried the long inbound. It wasn't there, so it goes to Nichols near midcourt. She throws up a 40-footer. It doesn't hit anything. That is how the first half expires. 20 minutes in the books here in Poughkeepsie, New York. The Marist Red Foxes lead the Niagara Purple Eagles 31-19. to Steve Eggick and I will take a break. When we come back, we've got the Poughkeepsie Nissan Halftime Report. All of your first half standings and max statistics. Or, I'm sorry, let's try that the other way. First half statistics and max standings are coming your way after this here on WKIP 1450 AM and the Red Fox Network.
It's halftime here in McCann Arena. The Maris Red Foxes lead the Niagara Purple Eagles 31-19 in women's basketball action. Alongside Steve Eggie, I'm Jeff Brown. This is the McKimsey Nissan Halftime Report. Steve, Maris uh, played reasonably well in the first half. Certainly not their best half of basketball in the season, but they did it all. They sure did. I mean, they're up 12. They missed some shots. Jarose in particular, uh, shots that she usually puts away. Uh, but defensively, uh, very, very good defensively. Uh, doubling the post, forcing some turnovers, uh, closing out shooters, and, uh, you know, making it difficult for them. But they don't have people, talking about Niagara, that can score the ball from the perimeter. So I think their game plan really is set up perfectly uh, against this team. Two and double figures for the Red Foxes. Tori Jaros has 10 points on 5 of 11 shooting. Ali Clement with She's really She made the all-rookie team last year, great three-point shooter, uh, but she can get it done uh, on the, her mid-range game is continually developing, and that's going to be critical moving forward because they're going to crowd her. They're not going to give her those wide-open threes, and uh, I think that bodes well for the Foxes, but she was uh, big time in the first half. The shorthanded Purple Eagles with only eight players dressed and really seven of those eight available. Sherburn, the starting point guard, only will play in an emergency. We're told uh, they were one-dimensional in the first half. Up with the arm from beyond the arc, you can tell they, they tried to get the ball to Lipsinski down low. Maris did a very good job doubling the post, making her life difficult. They really did. She ended up, I think, ended up with nine. Yep. Uh, she's tough inside, but you have to take the basketball out of her hands. And then and when she kicks it out, close out your opponent. Maris did a very good job of that. Very few perimeter jumpers by the Purple Eagles in the first half. Red Fox has got contributions from three others outside of Clement and Jero. Sydney Coffey with five, Maura Fitzpatrick with four, Louisa Henning's daughter added two. I think Maura Fitzpatrick, four points on three shots, along with a couple of rebounds and an assist, is continuing, Steve, to come into her own. She is. You know, again, we've mentioned her a lot this year just because of her athleticism. Uh, she's got a lot of capability on the offensive end. She had 15 uh, in the last game against Monmouth. And as, as her game evolves, this team will get better. When you have four legitimate scorers and they're all on, it's going to be very, very difficult to beat this team in the conference. At the half, the Marist Red Foxes lead the Niagara Purple Eagles 31-19. to Stephen, I'll take a break here on the Poughkeepsie Nissan Halftime Report. We come back, be joined by Travis Teletasi, Maris, the Associate Athletic Director. We'll talk about all the upcoming promotions, the fun things that are going on in McCann Arena for men's and women's basketball games the rest of the year. Stay tuned for that here on WKIP 
Back on the Poughkeepsie Nissan Halftime Report here inside McCann Arena. Marist by 12 over Niagara at the break. I'm Jeff Brault alongside the Marist Senior Associate Athletic Director, Travis Telatasi. And, you know, if you've been on social media today, you may have seen the Duquesne men's basketball team. They're stuck on a bus somewhere in Pennsylvania. The Temple Gymnastics team stuck on a bus because of winter storm Juno that's ravaging the Northeast, though, nary a flurry in Poughkeepsie today. Travis, you're the guy who handles all the travel accommodations for the men's and women's basketball team. You got the men's team out of here last night. They're at Monmouth tomorrow. Winter can really wreak havoc yeah. on Division One teams traveling across the country. Uh, winter is very unpredictable, and, and we always try to stay ahead of it. And as you know, with this forecast, it was very challenging because nobody would make a forecast. So uh, one of the things that we do is look ahead um, to see you know, what, what things are transpiring in the weather. And, and try to have a plan, and, and we set that in motion on uh, Thursday and reevaluated again on Friday to just to make sure that everybody got there safe, and that's the top priority. It's not about money at that point. Uh, it's that the teams, the student athletes, the coaches arrive there safe and can play the game. We, we were in touch with Monmouth. Uh, they were not going to move the game, so we have to get there, and we made the decision to go uh, Friday night so that our, our teams were safe. Again, Marist men in action tomorrow at Monmouth. It's a 2 p.m. start. You can catch the game on the Red Fox Network with Dean Darling and, well, we'll find out. Depends who can make it because of the weather. But we know Dean will be there, and we know the game's happening at 2 p.m. tomorrow. So that's what's next up. It's a road game for the Red Foxes. Plenty of home games remaining on the schedule for the men's and women's basketball teams. Yeah. The promotions coming yeah, up. A lot of our signature events coming up. Uh, we have our, our Pink Zone game for uh, breast cancer awareness that we work with Miles of Hope on. Uh, you know, that, that's always a big day, getting the local community out and uh, supporting those who are survivors of breast cancer and, and pack the house for our women's uh, game is going to be the, the last game of the year. So uh, those are two big events that traditionally have, have drawn really well here. On the men's side, um, you know, we, we have a lot of games coming up in February, some good teams coming in. Monmouth will come back to the McCann Center. We have Siena coming up, and uh, that's going to be on Super Bowl Sunday. And one of the things that, that we did since, uh, you know, we, we don't really like to play on Super Bowl Sunday, but uh, we made that a noon game and are going to host a breakfast prior to that game at 10 o'clock, which is open to all fans. Uh, it's, it's $12 for buffet breakfast. Uh, kids are uh, $8, so uh, a good way to... Get the fans out early, making an event. Uh, Coach Passos from Siena is going to speak. Coach Maker from Maris will speak at the breakfast. And uh, it should be a good morning to start if, off Super Bowl if, Sunday. If you've never heard Jimmy Passos, the Siena men's coach, he alone is worth the price he of is. admission. So come on out Super Bowl Sunday for that. And uh, both the men's and women's basketball team also in the near future will be supporting some charities, some causes that they really believe in. It starts on Monday with the women, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, uh, which was started by Jacqueline Murphy and her father, Dennis. They're local to the Hudson Valley from Arlington. Jacqueline is now a student at Barish. She's one of the managers for Jess O'Brien and the women's lacrosse team. Friends of Jacqueline pairs kids with pediatric brain tumors with sports teams, Division One, professional, Division Two, all the way down to the high school level, just kind of give them a feeling of inclusion, something a number of Marist teams have been very involved in. It's a really cool cause. Yeah, and our women's basketball team has done a great job uh, making that an event here. As you mentioned, a number of teams are involved, uh, women's across. Uh, Jacqueline is a manager, um, so that's a great tie-in. They did a nice feature on HBO Real Sports uh, on her, so uh, it, it's a great cause. We, we love the fans to support that. Our, our men's lacrosse team, our football team, our baseball team are all, all involved. Uh, our women's soccer team are, is involved as well. So uh, nice to see our student athletes realizing how something like that can really change somebody's life and a family's life and, and really realize the importance of it. Mike Baker and the Maris men's team are big supporters of the Wounded Warrior Project, which assists veterans uh, who have served our country overseas and who may need a little help in reacclimating to society or dealing with 
or medical challenges, whatever it may be, they are big supporters of that project. And in February, there will be a game supporting wounded warriors. Yeah, another great cause that's uh, really supported by our uh, national organization, NACTA. They do a great job of supporting the wounded warriors throughout the year. Many colleges and universities are involved in that. And, uh, you know, Coach Maker's father was a Marine, so he, he's really vested in that as well. And uh, just another great cause. And I give our, our student athletes uh, and coaches a lot of credit for the amount of community service work that they do. Uh, you know, three-time winner of the, the Pepsi Good Works Challenge from the MAC. So uh, they're constantly not only competing on the court, but also helping others uh, in the community and outside of the classroom, which is just as important in my opinion. You can check out all the upcoming promotions, upcoming schedules online at GoRedFoxes.com. The men are on the road tomorrow at Monmouth. The women are back in this building on Monday, a 7 o'clock start against St. Peter's on Friends of Jacqueline Knight. He's Travis Delatasi, Maris Senior Associate Athletic Director. Guest here in the Poughkeepsie Nissan Halftime Report. Travis, thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Jeff. At the half, Maris leads Niagara 31-19. to We're back with the second stands next here on the Red Fox Network. We go to the second half here inside McCann Arena on the campus of Marist College in Poughkeepsie with the Marist Red Foxes leading the Niagara Purple Eagles 31 to 19. He's Steve Begging. I'm Jeff Brault. And Steve, let's take a look at the MAC women's basketball stand. You see the Siena Saints all alone atop the league at 8 and 1. Iona a half game ahead of Marist in second and 7 and 2. The Red Foxes with a win year over Niagara will move back into a tie for second place. And boy, how about Quinnipiac charging a hard on a four-game winning streak? Oh, it's going to, hey, you have to hold serve uh, at home, Jeff, and pick up some victories on the road. It's going to be a lot of fun the second half of the max season. Defending champs and Quinnipiac Bobcats not done yet. Second half action underway in McCann Arena. Niagara with the basketball first from right to left. It's Strumple at the head of the key. She passes left to Charisma Bryant Nearer. Back to Strumple, who looks inside for Lipzinski, but it's tipped away by the Foxes. And Oberdorf grabs the loose ball. Niagara's 13th turnover. Maris done a very good job forcing giveaways. Coffee on the far wing for the Foxes. Clement, Oberdorf, Fitzpatrick, and Jerome's on the court. Here's Tory operating under the cylinder, and she scores. Just a great entry pass there by Coffee. You see Jerome's showing her quickness there with that reverse layup. Sixth made bucket for Jerome's. Give her 12 points along with six rebounds. Tory, 13 double-doubles on the year. That's third best in the nation 
Vercelli left arc for Niagara, moves it into the corner for Bryant, who gets into the paint. Here's Lipsitsky on the right baseline, out to Grand Roof, top of the key. Cycle left, Porcelli, three ball, got it. The first three for Niagara today. They needed that three ball. Good looking three by Porcelli. They've really struggled up until that point from the perimeter. So, Purple Eagles have the first bucket of the second half. 33-22 Marist with eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this one. Now, I should say, that was the first three-point bucket of the second half as the Red Foxes turned the basketball over the other way. Yeah, Maura Fitzpatrick, she kind of did lost her way there. She had an open look, passed out, and ended up getting a three-second uh, call. The Maris lead is 11. Corselli, long-range left for Niagara. The Purple Eagles, as you'd expect, wearing purple, trimmed in white. Here's Lipsinski to Strumpel down low. Doubled, leaves Corselli open. The left side three is good. Back-to-back back. triples by Niagara. The no. Purple Eagles aren't coming away. They're not. That was good in-and-out basketball. Really good pass out by Strumpel as uh, the Purple Eagles tip it out of bounds. Maris retains possession. But uh, of Corselli, last two possessions, two big threes for the Purple Eagles. Corselli, with her 23rd and 24th threes of the season, came into the game shooting just 23% from beyond the arc. She got the last two to fall, and Brian Georges is making a point guard change. Gartred in for Oberdorf. Here's Jeroz through the lane for Maris, and Tori scores again. A great take off the bounce there by Jeroz in traffic, high off the window, made that one look easy. Box is back up, double digits, 35-25. Maris with 7.58 remaining here in the third quarter. Lipsinski off right to Corselli, who's been feeling it. Now Gartred with the assignment. Free throw line, Strumpel slips by Fitzpatrick to the basket. The layup goes, and one. Nice play off the bounce by Strumpel. She got hacked on the arms. She's going to line for a possible conventional three-point play. Now Jada Pearson, Niagara will make a change. Nichols is in for Grand Ruth as Strumpel, a 75% free throw shooter, prepares for the bonus to pull Niagara within seven. And the Fox is letting this team hang around. Trumple's free throw is a swish. And Jada Pierce, Steve, has been the coach with the better halftime adjustment. Uh, no question about it. They're come out, they've come out with a lot of energy here. Uh, sticking with this 2-2-1. Maris has done a good job uh, against that three-quarter court pressure. Here's Fitzpatrick with the lane open against the zone. Nice six-footer banks it in. Good fundamental shot by the freshman. Yeah, absolutely. She turned and faced, saw some. Saw an opening there, kissed it off the glass for the deuce. Harris by nine, Nichols left arc for the Purple Eagles. They shoot at the goal to the left, Strumpel at the free throw line. Off right, Bryant, mid-range jumper, air ball, right to Tori Jerome's. Yeah, good close out there by Coffey, really forced that miss. Clement quick the other way to Sydney Coffey on the far wing. Now long to Clement, thought about the deep three, but gives up Coffey. The corner triple and rims out. Karim to Corselli in the Purple Eagles. Uh, un unfelt, unselfish pass there by Clement, just in and out there by Coffey on the three ball. We've played three minutes in the third quarter. Niagara's got the rock. Nichols looking inside for Lipsinski. It's not there, so she works it right to Bryant, top of the key, and Corselli in the far wing. The three, too strong. Rebound to Rebecca Gard. Boy, a lot of confidence in that shot. Corselli's feeling it. Yeah, she called for that ball. She wanted that three. Hey, it was right on line, Jeff, just hard off the back iron. Coffee far wing to Fitzpatrick in the high post, out to Clement, triple try, no. Offensive rebound for Fitzpatrick, doubled underneath, so she dribbles out of it. Here's Jerose in the right block, to the 10, she's fouled. Yeah, they have to start doubling her. Nice play there by Jerose, took it up with her left hand. She's going to line to shoot two. That Niagara foul is... First for the Purple, pardon me, the second for the Purple Eagles as Jeroz misses the first free throw. Tori coming in a 78% shooter at the line. Another coming for Jeroz. She got that one. Run of two, splitting the pair. 38 28 Maris. Six minutes, 26 seconds remaining. In the third quarter, Niagara basketball, Bryant to Lipsinski at the top of the key. Right side, Nichols finds Lipsinski, who's doubled on the right block, passes out of it to Bryant, count the layup and one. Well, that's a great pass by Lipsinski. She was doubled and hit a cutting Bryant, who took the contact. She's going to line for a possible conventional three-point play for the Purple Eagles. It will be Niagara's second of the second half. They're playing really well since the break. 
Bryant's free throw is no good. Rebound batted up in the air right to Bryant. Second chance blocked by Jarose. Out of bounds off the block, though. So it stays with Niagara. That was a good play there. Maris didn't block out on that free throw. We'll have another chance. Inbounds looking for Lipzinski. Center of the lane, but she's unable to bring it down. Loose ball picked up by Bryant. Purple Eagles with it. 6.04 remaining in the third. It's 38-30. Maris Strumpel top of the key. Triple try. Air ball grabbed by Tori Jarose for her eighth rebound. Well, love Strumpel shooting that three ball. She didn't look very comfortable there from beyond the arc. Allie Clement right of the rings. Tamora Fitzpatrick in the short corner. Flips it back to Clement. Now it's Fitzpatrick inside. She falls down to the block. Clement picks up the loose ball. Misses a three. And then the rebound saved from going out of bounds by Gardner, but right to Niagara. Purple Eagles in a five on three if they hurry. Now five on four as Gardner's back in the play. Here's Jarose. So we're at full strength. Bryant, top of the arc. Moves it left to Nichols. Post entry, Lipzinski spins right on Tori, who stuffs the shot and takes it down. Uh, great timing there by Jarose. Another tremendous block. Allie Clement left baseline out to Coffee Far Wingers. Gardrid between the circles to Jarose at the free throw line. Shot in the middle of the zone, short. Rebound collected by Bryant and the Purple Eagles. 5.06 remaining in the third quarter. Maris leads 38 to 30. Niagara outscoring the Foxes 11 7 since halftime. Nichols long left against the Marist man, far side Corselli. And now Bryant top of the key, Lipzinski inside, out to Bryant. Free throw line jumper off left, another carom for Jerome's her ninth. Uh, Tori doing a great job just cleaning the glass. There's Gardrid up top for the Foxes. To Clement on the far wing, open for three, down the well. Uh, nice pass there by Gardrid to a wide open Clement. I don't know where that zone is, you got to shade Clement. That was a wide open three ball by Alex. She could have heated up a bowl of soup with yeah, all the time she, she had really to shoot that one. She was just wide open with nobody within five feet of her. 13 for the sophomore from Maine. 418 to go in the third. Here's Lipzinski down low. Shot around Jarose. Doesn't fall. Another rebound for Tori, giving her a double double. 14th of the year, seventh straight. She's had one in every Mac game. Yeah, she's just a double double machine. Continues to play great. Now Tori on the left post to the rim. She's fouled. Yeah, really a great take there by Jarose off the bounce. Quick drop step. She took the contact. She's going to line to shoot two. That Niagara foul is on Sam Lipzinski. Her third, team second. Maris Red Foxes will have Jerome shooting two on the other side of this. Timeout, 4 2 remaining in the third. Maris leads Niagara 41-30. You're hearing it live on the Red Fox Network. Four minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter tonight. The Marist Red Foxes lead the visiting Niagara Purple Eagles 41 to 30. Alongside Steve Egging, I'm Jeff Roll. Glad to have you along on the Red Fox Network this Saturday evening. And well, Steve, on the Red Fox Network, uh, plenty to dance about. <laughs> because there's no snow here in Poughkeepsie. We dodged it by about oh, maybe 15 miles. Hey, we were lucky. I mean, my uh, talk to my daughter. Uh, middle daughter Sabrina earlier in the day, and they're getting hammered uh, down in Queens, New York City. So we're, we were really lucky on this uh, storm that they were saying was going to reach us, but uh, fortunately stayed to the south. The Marist men had to deal with a bit of travel problems because of the snow. They play at Monmouth tomorrow at 2 p.m. Left after their game against Fairfield on Friday. And Steve, that men's game tomorrow, big one. They need to get a little momentum going. 
Yeah, they really do. And they played well at times last night. Uh, just could not uh, get over the hump, but uh, tomorrow's going to be difficult. Monmouth, you know, hasn't been playing as well as of late. You know, they got beat by Manhattan on Thursday, uh, but Monmouth's very talented. I think from top to bottom, the most talented team offensively uh, in the match. Eileen Van Horn has checked in for the Maris Red Foxes. First action for Van Horn, the 5'8 senior from Waukesha, Wisconsin, averaging two points, two boards, and two dimes a game. Tori Jero is at the free throw line for a pair. She's one of two in the game, 78% on the season. First free throw is a swish. Gives Jero 16 points and 10 rebounds. A wonderful stat line, 7 of 14 shooting. And Steve, what were you and I talking about during the game? And yeah. She has missed three cripples. Yeah, she has. I mean, it could be even better as uh, she makes the second free throw. But such a weapon. She lives at the foul line, and she's got better percentage-wise each and every year. Again, 14 double-doubles, including tonight. She has one in every MAC game. Basically walks in the gym with 16 and 10. It really is amazing. I mean, she's just been... A consistent, but at a dominant, consistent level. Haley Strumpel knocks down an 18-footer for the Niagara Purple Eagles. Steve, they're starting to get perimeter shooting, and because of it, are no longer one-dimensional as the Purple Eagles' Jayla Nichols collides with Sydney Coffey in transition. It's Nichols' first foul, team's third. Niagara will not go away quietly, Steve, if they keep hitting shots. Hey, you have to give them credit. You know, they seven people playing. Uh, that's a credit to uh, Jada Pierce and her staff to keep this team playing hard. Uh, they've been doing very, very well here in the third quarter. Gardrid rips out a right arm three. Van Horn with the offensive rebound, but she lost it going back up against the double. Niagara with the strip as Corselli pulls it away. Bryant, Strumpel, Lipsitsky, and Nichols on the court. Strumpel off right for Bryant. Space on a three if she wants it. She doesn't. Finds Lipsinski at 18. Nichols left arc. She'll shoot the three. Too strong. And Gardrid's got the rebound. Steve, I think the freshman from Sweden is playing one of the better games of the season. Yeah, her. absolutely. She really is. She's been uh, good with the basketball. Hasn't turned it over. Done some good things tonight. Here's Gardrid between the circles to Van Horn right side. Nice ball movement to Bob at the right elbow. Her jumper from there is blocked out of bounds. It stays with Marist. Yeah, they just tipped it there. Uh, Maris to get the basketball out of bounds. Kendall is jogging back on defense like she thought for a second. Maybe she just airballed that ball, but she would have missed the rim by a good uh, six feet. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, definitely got a piece of it. Gardrid baseline left. Restarts to Coffee on the far sideline. Cycle right to Bob, and now Van Horn right angle. To the point, here's Gardrid near arc. To Jarose at the foul line. Head of steam to the basket. She lays it uh, in. Just tremendous off the bounce there by Jarose. Facing up at the high post. Quick to the goal. Made that one look easy. That was not an easy shot going to the goal. Sometimes, Steve, Tori falls in love with a fall away. But, boy, when she lowers her shoulders and goes hard to the basket, I don't know anybody can stop her in the back. Uh, no one in this league. Here's Nichols for a left arc three. She left it short. Rebound goes to, well, it's going to stay with Niagara. It would have gone to either Van Horn or Jarose. Problem is it went to Van Horn, and then Tori Jarose stuck a shoulder into her teammate. Yeah. So Eileen she, lost the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Niagara keeps it. Yeah, that happens sometimes. They were both going for the basketball. Unfortunately, it went out of bounds. Nichols hands to a curling Porcelli coming from the left corner. As Tiffany takes the ball to the top of the key for the Purple Eagles. 2.09 to go in the third. It's 45-32 Marist. Head of the key, Strumpel, left arc Porcelli. Up fake on Gardner, doesn't bite, so Tiffany gives up Lipsinski. And now right side, Strumpel, up on Bob, dribbles a 16 feet, lost the ball in the back pass. It was tipped away by Sidney Coffey with the help. So Niagara keeps it 10 to shoot. Maris doing a better job. They've got to get to shooters, as you alluded to earlier, Jeff. They're getting it done from the perimeter much, much better here in the third quarter. Strumpel, right sideline, inbounds, looking for Lipsinski, but it's intercepted by Sidney Coffey. Niagara turns the basketball over for the 14th time. Here's Van Horn right arc for Marist. Inside Jarose. Double comes. Tori steps back, tries that fall away. It's no good. Purple Eagle rebound. Yeah, she doesn't need that fall away. She can just, just good head fake, take it hard to the goal. She was off balance on that attempt. And if you miss, more often than not, they're going to foul as Bryant's got it for Niagara. Zinski left elbow. Out right side, Nichols. Top of the key, Corselli. 12 to shoot for Niagara. Minute 24 remaining in the third period. 45 32 Foxes. Corselli. To Bryant, left baseline, Jay, swish with four on the timer. That was uh, a deep two. That was a great, great two ball by Bryant. Excellent closeout by Coffey. That was just a nice shot. Maris lead is 11, 70 seconds remaining in the third. 
Van Horn and Gardrid play pitch and catch to break Corselli's pressure. Now Bob in the center of the lane to Gardrid at the top of the key. Extra pass to Van Horn, right corner. Bob center of the lane. Jump shot, rolls off to the left. Rebounded by Strumpel. That's a good look there by Bob from about 12 feet. Just could not get it to go down. 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 45-34 Maris. Niagara basketball right to left. It's Strumpel between the rings. Pass left, Bryant. Triple try to belong two is short. Corey Giroux secures the rebound for Maris. Here's Gardrid at the top of the arc. Near side, Van Horn. Eileen works left to Coffee. Thought about a long three. Instead, puts it on the deck, driving on Bryant. Nothing there. Sid gives it up far side, Gardrid. Little jab step on Bryant. Flips it to Bob. Back to Gardrid. Open for three. It's good. She got the roll. She got the shooter's bounce there. <laughs> Didn't look like it was going to go down, but they count. Nice three ball there by Gardrin. It is just the third of Rebecca's career. That one hit about four times off the iron. Is there Corselli to answer? No. And Jarrows rips down the rebound as the third quarter expires. The Rebecca Gardrin triple has the Maris Red Foxes leading by 14 after 30 minutes of basketball. 48 for Maris, 34 for Niagara. We'll go to the fourth quarter next. Welcome back inside McCann Arena here on the campus of Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. After 30 minutes of basketball, the Marist Red Foxes lead the Niagara Purple Eagles 48 to 34. Alongside Steve Eggie, I'm Jeff Rolf. Steve, Marist trying to win their fourth in a row. It'll be the Red Foxes' longest winning streak of the season. And they've still got two more home games to come in this homestand. St. Peter's in this building on Monday, a 7 o'clock start. And then a very important matchup. Sienna Saints on Thursday at 5 p.m. So this game against Niagara, the next 10 minutes, Maris trying to hold on to a 14-point lead, and then the next two are very big. Oh, they are. Every home game, you know, if you want to be the first, second, third seed, you have to take care of your home games, and then obviously win some games on the road. But Maris has been so dominant over the years at McCann Arena. They're hitting their stride at the right time. Hey, like Ryan George has said, Jeff, you don't want to peak now, but they're playing very, very well now, getting contributions from more people in their lineup, and uh, hopefully that will continue as the second half of the season moves forward. Well, Niagara had their best quarter of the game in the third, scoring 15 points and shooting 38%, but Maris ended the quarter on a 10-4 run to shoot 43%, including two of six from beyond the arc. Look at Barker is in for Maris to start the fourth quarter. The freshman from Florham Park, New Jersey, has it at the right elbow. Back to Van Horn. Now Clement to Van Horn at the top of the key. Center of the lane, Barker. The zone collapses, so she works it out to Clement with 12 on the timer. Jump pass far side, Van Horn. Attacks to the left baseline. Stops. Back to Clement. Triple try is short. And the rebound to Bryant and Niagara. Both Sydney Coffey and Tori Jarrows off the floor for the Red Foxes, Steve. So, Ryan George wants to see if his bench can maintain the advantage. Hey, when you get opportunities, Barker, first time in the game, she's got to uh, contribute. Henning's daughter, hey, they have to learn to play at times without their two main guns. For Selly, high post for Niagara, out right side, Brian. Here's Strumpel at the head of the key to Grandrith. 
far wing three, short, rebound is loose. Strumpel's got it and is fouled on the second chance. Well, you see it immediately. You know, Jaros is such a wonderful rebounder. She cleans that rebound up every single time. Strumpel's tough, though, inside. Henning Stoddard and Bartner have to do a better job of walking her out. It's so the first on Morgan Bartner. First on Marist here is Strumpel. Readies for the free throw. It's good. Daly's had a nice game, 11.6 rebounds. Ryan Jordan was worried that her speed might cause a problem for the Red Fox fours. That has been the case. Second free throw, no. Lisa Henning's daughter, the rebound for Maris. Along with Bartner and Henning's daughter, Van Horn, Clement, and Fitzpatrick are the guards. Top of the key, Bartner. She's called for traveling at the elbow. Sort of slip backwards maybe not a lot of pressure there yeah she just kind of lost her balance she kind of whenever you catch it at the high post you want to turn and face establish your pivot foot Bartner didn't do that turn the basketball over 850 remaining in regulation 48 35 Marist Corselli right sideline moves to the top of the arc against Clement in the Marist man near side Grand here off Fitzpatrick Lipsinski left elbow out to Bryant moves it right to Corselli far away Bryant top of the arc and we've got a whistle Foul away from the ball. It's on Maris. I think they got Bartner again. Yeah, they got Bartner inside there. God, I can't have the forearm. She had her forearm on Strumpel there. An easy call to make. Got to keep your hands off. Two on Bartner in the last two and a half minutes. Fresh shot clock for Niagara. He bounced to Grand Ruth in the right short. Court. Here's Brian up top. Hands to the point guard, Corselli. Allie Clement shadowing her. Long range right, Grand Ruth. Fitzpatrick gives her a bit of a cushion on the floor. Right side, Corselli with 17 to shoot. Post entry, Lipsinski, catch, turn, shot, and score. Oh, great play, great catch there by Lipsinski. She's got great hands, high off the window for the two ball. Purple Eagles down 11. Fitzpatrick out to Van Horn, far wing three, rims out right, rebound to Bryant. Good look, didn't go. Yeah, it was a really good look. Looked good when it was in the air, but just in and out for Van Horn. Niagara scored the first three points of the fourth period. Grand Ruth left arc because Niagara shoots at the hoop to the left. Lipsinski top of the key to Bryant on the far wing. Looking in for Lipsinski, not there. Strumpel out by Grand Ruth. Left arc three, swish. A big shot for Niagara. And the Maris lead is down to eight. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point game. Uh, timeout boxes. He tried to have the bench protect the lead. Talking about Brian Georges, they did not. Sydney Coffee and Tori Jarose are coming back in the game on the other side of this timeout. Stephen Isle step aside. 7.39 to go in the fourth. Marist 48, Niagara 40. You're on WKIP 14.50 AM and the Red Fox Network. to close within eight, 48, 40 Foxes. Harris trying to get their 27th win in program history against Niagara. Steve, such a delicate balance for a coach. Brian Georges has six freshmen that contribute. He's trying to get them valuable minutes, meaningful minutes, but it's just difficult to find them that time in a game that you're still going to make sure you win. Oh, no question about it. I mean, you know, they had a 13 point lead into the fourth quarter. Now, of course, uh, Jaros and Coffee back in the game. But you want to bring your freshman along, give him some meaningful minutes uh, in games that matter, obviously. But, uh, hey, Coffee, Jaros back in the game. It's eight-point game here with 7.39 to go in the contest. Yeah, along with the two senior studs, Maura Fitzpatrick, Allie Clement, and Eileen Van Horn are the other Red Foxes out there. Jada Pierce has only used six in this game. Her lineup, Corselli, 
Bryant, Nichols, Lefzinski, and Strumpel. Niagara shooting 42% in the second half, 8 of 19. They made 3 of 8 threes after missing all four of their triples in the first 20 minutes. Maris shooting 38% in the second half, 6 of 16, 2 of 8 from beyond the arc. Hey, you have to give this team a lot of credit. I mean, they've played six players, and they have played hard all game long. Just eight, eight points down with seven and a half to go. Coffee on the far wing for the boxes off the restart. Finds Clement, now Van Horn, right arc as the zone swings over. Eileen navigates to 16 feet, stops there, back to Clement straight away. And on the far wing, it's Coffee with 12 to shoot. She's at the free throw line. Right to Clement in the corner, Van Horn. 10 on the shot clock as Eileen spots Jeroz underneath. The layup, good off glass. Oh, that was a great entry pass there by Van Horn to a cutting Jeroz made it look easy inside. Nice body control by Tori Tuesday, right under the backboard. Yeah, she absolutely. Navigate the shot in. Excellent catch, and that made it look easy. It was a difficult play inside. Harris back up 10. Team Niagara can keep the pressure on Nichols near wing. Passes right to Lipsinski, who swings for Bryant right of the box. Into the lane. Just calls for traveling. Yeah, good defense there by the Fox. It made it difficult for Bryant, forcing that travel. Niagara's 15th turnover. Another great halftime adjustment. They have cut down on their giveaways. Niagara's look like a much better team in the second 20 than the first 20. Far side, Van Horn, Maris with the rock, left to right, Clement to Coffee, near corner three, got it. Uh, big time three ball, excellent pass, swing pass by Clement for Coffee for the three ball. It's amazing, Steve, with Coffee and Jarose on the floor, Maris just looks like a whole different team. They really do. I mean, it's like night and day. They're two dominant players, both preseason all max selections. So Niagara's just got the lead to eight, Maris back up 13, following five quick points. Bryant, top of the key to Lipsinski in the center of the laner. Strumpel right baseline, drives inside, kick out Nichols, three ball short, rebound to Allie Clement. She'll push near sideline, lead ahead in transition, Coffee on the left post to the block, her shot, no good, but she got fouled. So Sydney Coffee will shoot free throws. Boy, Coffee and Jarose both, they just run the floor in transition so well. Coffee again made that look easy. That was a difficult catch in traffic. You see it again on the Red Fox Network. Uh, Coffee getting clipped on the elbow. She's going to line to shoot two. Yeah, they put the foul on Brian. I thought it was Lipsinski that kind of tapped Coffee on the top of the head as Sid makes free throw number one. By the way, Steve, since Brian Euro just brought Jeroz and Coffee back in, uh, they've scored all six of Maris points. Yeah, they Im immediately make their impact as in and out there on the second one by Sidney Coffee. Yeah, still just six points for Jeroz and Coffee since coming back into the game as Sid splits the pair. 54-40 Maris. They quickly erase Niagara's 6-0 run with one of their own, talking about the Red Foxes. Here's Lisinski in the high post. We've got a whistle foul on Maris. Or Fitzpatrick away from the ball. Yeah, that's been a tough matchup there uh, with Strumpel inside. Strumpel's uh, really talented on the low block and uh, much larger, too. Uh, it's been a difficult guard for Fitzpatrick. Mora's second, Maris third, inbounds to Lipzinski at the elbow, out to Bryant, now Strumpel between the circles. Lipzinski center of the lane, bounce pass Bryant, 18-footer short, rebound batted up in the air, and finally pulled down by Mora Fitzpatrick. Here come the Foxes with 5.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. Jarose on the left block, spins baseline to the basket, she scores. Another great drop step in traffic there by Jarose. Another excellent entry pass there by Clement. 23 for Torrey on 10 of 18 from the field. Timeout, Jada Pierce. Timeout, Niagara. Steve and I will break as well. Five minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Maris leads by 16, their largest advantage of the game. 56 40 boxes here on the Red Box Network.
Five minutes and 15 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Maris leads 56 to 40. Their 16 point advantage is their largest of the game. I'm Jeff Ralt alongside Steve Egan. Steve, when the fourth quarter began, Marist was up by 14, but Brian Georges took his senior stars, Sidney Coffey and Tori Giroux, out of the game. So Niagara went on a 6 0 run. It most forced Coach Georges to call a timeout, get Sid and Tori back on the hardwood. And since those two re-entered, Marist has gone on an 8-0 run with all eight points scored by the seniors. Hey, that's why they're two of the best players uh, in this conference. They're just dominant. And Jarose has been dominant, 23-12, and double-double machine. There's no one in this conference uh, that can hold her on the low block, and uh, she's been terrific uh, once again tonight. Niagara will have the basketball coming out of Coach Pierce' timeout. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Jada Pierce is someone with history and ties to Brian Georges and the Red Foxes, the most prominent banner of the many that hang across the way in McCann Arena, the NCAA Sweet 16 in 2007. Coach Pierce was on Brian Georges' staff that year. She has spent time as an assistant most recently at St. Joe's. She's also had stops in the Hudson Valley under Dave McGarity, the former Marist men's head coach, now the Army women's coach. She was an assistant at UMass where Believe it or not, she was principally involved in recruiting Christina Danella, who started her collegiate career at UMass before transferring here to Maris. So Jada Pierce has her fingerprints all over the Maris program. Yeah, she really does, and she's done a wonderful job. You know, she's had some injuries, a couple uh, kids transferred, and uh, hey, tonight's a perfect example. They're down 16, but they have fought hard, and they've won, as you alluded to, as Lesetsky uh, makes the first free throw. Uh, four of six, you know, they've played well as of late. Yeah, Marist fouling Lipzinski on a left block shot toward Jarose on the personal. It puts Sam on the line for two, and she makes both. Hard to believe, Steve. Just Tori's first personal foul. How rare is it for a center to go 35 yeah, minutes really without committing a foul and playing? Yeah, she's, well, she's got great timing. That's why she's such a great shot blocker. She rarely fouls. Fox is by 14. They've got the ball left to right. Coffee in the high post, pulls up on a jumper and short, and Corselli flies in for the Niagara rebound. 56-42, Maris with 4.46 remaining. Corselli straight on, moves it far wing, Nichols. Now left to Strumpel at 18 feet. Here's Corselli near side into the corner for Bryant. Knives to the paint, back to Lipsinski. 16-foot jumper off the heel of a basket and out to Van Horn. Yeah, that's where you want her shooting the basketball. She's not nearly as comfortable from 17 feet. Coffee wide open for a far wing three. She left it short. Rebound out long. Coffee battling for it. Niagara comes in to tie up the ball. It's with the Purple Eagles on the arrow. Steve, they just left Coffee, allowed her to dial up a 22 footer. Luckily for Niagara, she missed the open yeah, look. This zone, especially in the second half, they're just not getting the shooters. I mean, when you're that wide open, obviously you got to take the attempt. But I think they're getting tired, Jeff. I mean, they've only played six players tonight. And uh, as games wear on, it, it's difficult uh, not to come out and get some rest, even at a, for a minute or two. Bryant is out for Niagara, replaced by Grandruth. And you know, this Purple Eagle zone, Steve, it's not a, a passive three-point line and in kind of zone. They'll extend it to 30 feet. It's a very active, aggressive zone. Oh, it is. I mean, they'll pick you up 25, 30 feet away. Here's Nichols for a top of the key three. Too strong. Out to the right sideline where Corselli tracks it down. Coffey tries to trap. Forces a bad pass. Stolen by Van Orn. Ahead to Coffey. Pacing the field to the right, the layup is good. Uh, nice job in transition after that steal by Coffey, taking it to the goal. Sid becomes the third Red Fox in double figures. She's got 11. And Steve, when Marist finds three double-digit scores, they're very tough to beat. Oh, uh, they really are. And, uh, hey, it's emerging. You know, Clement got off early. When they have three in double figures, they're almost impossible to beat. Now we've talked about Fitzpatrick, too. She's given him that fourth option. That's going to bode well as this max season moves forward. Tori Jarose fouled Sam Lipzinski on the right block, so that puts Lipzinski on the line for two. Her first is good. Jarose's second foul, the fifth on the Foxes, so Niagara shoots a pair the rest of the way. 342 remaining in the fourth. It's 58-43 Marist pending this second Lipzinski free throw. It's up and good. Sam makes both. 58-44 Maris, good game for Lipzinski, 15 points, including a perfect 7-of-7 seven seven at the line. Strumpel's added 12, Bryant has 8-and-5, Corselli 6-8 rebounds, a career high, and 4 assists. 
as Clement knocks down a right arc three for the Foxes. Give her 16 points, one off her career high. She's made four threes. Ah, uh, she's been really super tonight. Great pass, opposite, looking opposite by Jarose. Brad Ruth will open in the left corner for Niagara. Three to answer is short. And Jaros with a great rebound over Lipzinski, who had position to Clement in transition. Pull up, Jay rims out. And Lipzinski able to get the rebound for Niagara. Three minutes remaining, 61-44 Foxes. Mara shooting 44% in the game, 7 of 22 from beyond the arc. That's 32%. The far wing, Corselli dumps it into the corner. Nichols, now right elbow jumper, Lipzinski hits. Oh, she's really been really, really good tonight. I think that's her 17th point mid-range jumper by their Lipzinski. Here's Jaros in the right corner, drives to the block, pass looking for Fitzpatrick, is deflected away by Niagara, stolen by Strumpel. 2.30 remaining, 61-46, Marist. Long range right, Nichols, top of the key, Strumpel the three, no. Rebound, batted out of bounds by Van Horn, and stays with Niagara. Fox is making some changes. I believe some starters are going to see their day come to an end. Overdorf, Gardrid, and Henning's daughter are in. Clement, Van Horn, and Fitzpatrick are out to an ice ovation. Yeah, they played well. Clement really was superb from beyond the arc, finishing with 16. Here's Nichols for a quick 16-footer off the inbound. She knocks it down. And that for Jayla Nichols, Steve Egging. Not only her first points of the game in seven shot attempts, the first points of her collegiate career. Oh, uh, she'll remember that mid-range jumper, that's for sure. Oberdorf at the top of the key for the Foxes, working on Corselli. Gardrid right side, Ennings Dodder at the elbow, out to Gardrid. Up on Nichols, Jarose center of the lane, aggressive against Lipzinski to the 10. Tory scores again, give her 25, two all for career high. Just a great dribble drive there with her offhand, high off the window. Another tremendous shot there by Jarose inside. Niagara basketball, Lipzinski at the foul line. Finds Bryant left short corner to Corselli far wing. Step back, three on Oberdorf, rims out. Another rebound for Jarose. Nope, she lost it. Lipzinski comes in to tie it up. Maris has it on the arrow. And with Bob and Sidney Rosales coming in for Maris, Torrid Jaro's day is done. 25 and 13. Tori came into the day, Steve, needing 38 points for 1,000. Jaleen, 13 away from becoming the 25th Red Fox to ever reach the marathon, the milestone. Uh, she's just another dominant performance by Jarose. Okay, her, her conference uh, stats are just off the charts. Here's Oberdorf, right arc for the Foxes, moving left against Bryant, spins to 18 feet, back to Sidney Rosales, the junior from Colony, New York. Known as a three-point gunner who's dealt with a myriad of injuries in her career. Henning's daughter open in the left corner. High arcing three is short. And Lipsinski collects another rebound for Niagara. 63-48. Maris with one minute remaining. The Foxes will run their winning streak to four as Nichols misses a left arc three. Rebounded by Henning's daughter who's then fouled 90 feet from the bucket. Nice Maris. job. Excuse me, Jeff. Okay. Nice job by Henning's daughter in traffic there. They need more of that from her. They need her to rebound the basketball, use her height at 6'3". Fourth straight win for the Foxes, Steve, as mentioned, their longest winning streak of this season. What, to you, has been the biggest factor for Maris in getting these four victories in a row? Well, they've, they've, got, they've got some contributions from different people, and I think as the season has gone on, you know, they've gained more confidence. They must get... They, they must get better play from the freshman. Maris turns it over. Strumpel gets a look inside for Niagara. Misses it. Offensive rebound. Bryant. And she has, uh, pardon me, that was Corselli with the second chance points for Niagara. The shot clock is not off. And, well, it can't be. There's 27.2. No, it is. All right, 27.2 seconds. There was 27 on the timer. They take those away. So Maris can dribble out this victory after the inbound following the Corselli foul in the backcourt. It's into Gardrick. Flips it to Oberdorf in the front court. And the Red Foxes, they might not want to dribble this one out. Henning's daughter in the left corner, 16 seconds to go. Dribbles to the wing, finds Rosales long left. Now it's Gartred right of the rings, lost the basketball, tracks it down near midcourt. Bob, head of the key, nine dish remaining in the game. Far side, Rosales to Bob, mid post left, going to put up a shot. It's short, rebounded by Niagara. Two seconds to go, Corselli fires from midcourt. It's no good. And the Red Foxes get a victory. They defeat the shorthanded Niagara Purple Eagles by the final score of 63-50. to 50. Coming up on the postgame, Steve Egging will speak with Brian George and the Red Foxes going back to McCann Arena after this on the Red Fox Network.
It's the final in Poughkeepsie. Maris defeats Niagara 63 to 50. I'm Jeff Brault. Steve Eckick is at center court with Brian George. Steve. Here with head coach Brian Georges. Brian, congratulations on your fourth consecutive victory. Ali Clement got you going early, but Tori Giroux was tremendous throughout. Your thoughts? Um, she was, and I thought we got some good play from some of the other people. I thought Eileen came in and gave us a lift, but I really thought Allie had a great game today. We had to take her out once because she started rushing things. When she plays within herself, she's a very, very good basketball player. But, I, you know, like I said, it was... It was uh, a good win. I thought we could have played better. Thought some of our shot selection, especially down the stretch, we didn't play any type of type of possession. We just played. And uh, I've got to get more from my bench today. We did not get a lot of contributions today. I thought defensively you did a great job doubling the post. You know, there, uh, Strumpel's very good. Lapsinski inside had a good game. But you took the basketball out of their hands, closed out shooters. They did make some shots in the third quarter. But I thought defensively your kids played very well, Coach. I thought they did too. Strumpel and uh, you know, the big kid are, are very, very good players. And I thought Sidney Coffey did a great job of reading pass, getting tips, getting deflections. Um, and getting us going to the other end. Um, I thought Rebecca Gardner had uh, a very good uh, game coming in off the bench. And uh, unfortunately, we got to shut her down for a while, I think. But um, you know, it was a good team win. Niagara's a good team. They had won five out of the last eight, you know, and, and we did a nice job. Hey, quick turnaround. Keep it going, Coach. We'll see you on Monday night against St. Peter's. Okay, thank you. Let's bring in Tori Jarose. Congrats, Tori. Really Really another tremendous performance, 25-13, and 13, against a team that initially, Lapsinski, tough inside, 6-3, gave you some a little bit of trouble in the first half, but you persevered, another tremendous effort. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, they're a great program. They only have, uh, I think, seven healthy kids, so um, they really work hard. And, you know, early on, Allie Clement really got you guys going. You know, she set her feet, ended up with, uh, I think, four or three balls, you know, when she extends defenses, that makes it a lot easier for you to do your thing on the low block. Exactly, especially in the zone. If she extends the, the zone, um, I have a little space to, um, you know, to post up inside. Um, and uh, she did a tremendous job knocking down her shots today. Now, what's the mindset of your team? This is four in a row now. You're playing at a high level. We're about the midway point of the MAC. Hey, you're playing well collectively. Some more of Fitzpatrick. Some other players are starting to step up. What's been the mood of the team? Um, you know, we're very, we're coming in every day, uh, ready to work hard, and the biggest thing I think is that we can't grow complacent. We have to come in each and every day and, and um, keep, continue to get better so that when we reach uh, the conference tournament, we're at our peak. Okay, again, great job. You had a quick turnaround. Day to prepare for St. Peter's. We'll see you back here on Monday night. Thank you so much. Let's send it back over to Jeff Rowe. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Tori. Steve and I will wrap up a 13-point Marist victory after this. Foxes 63-50 winners over Niagara here on the Red Fox Network.